Hill. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Minnesota Twins and the Chicago Cubs. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So just about set now. And now here's the starter for the Cubs, Porter Hodge. Well, this guy's just been filthy out there on the mound. Hitters batting under 200 against him. And they're just having a hard time squaring up anything, doing any type of damage. The only way he hurts himself is if he gives up the free passes and surrenders a rare home run. But outside of that, it's going to be a tough job for the opposing lineup today. All right, ready to go here. This is Willie Castro. The pitch. Outside low. And we are underway. The why to kick the pitch right through there for a strike. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Swings and misses. One and two. Righty delivers. Out towards left center. Dives, but it's off his glove. Base hit. That ball right there landed in what they call the no man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. they got to go a long way as well. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. Here's Trevor Larnick going along. What is upstairs? Nobody out. Runner at first. Swings through that. And another ball. Well, with the Amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt. A good secondary lead. Doesn't have to get away from the catcher, but if you're anticipating based off the trajectory, get yourself in the scoring position. Roll to short, possible two ball. Steps on the bag for one. Back to first, and that is a double play. Great job by the shortstop right there. Fields it, decides to take it himself. Second baseman can just chill out until the next play. Here's Byron Buxton. Maybe expecting a bunt here. Third baseman playing in on the edge of the grass. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Right-hander kicks deals. That's in there. And the count one and one. Two out spaces empty. Swing and a miss as he was late. One and two. The one two. Got him. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. On to the bottom of the first. No score. Back here at the friendly confines getting the nod in this one Simeon Woods Richardson and a guy like this is going to keep you in the ball game. He's going to go out there compete not going to see a whole lot of flair and flash but he's going to hand it over to the bullpen at some point and if you've been able to score a few runs you'll be in it late. So we'll see if he's able to do that for his club in this one. Here's Nico Horner. Taken high in the draft. He's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level.
Now the 0-1. One and one. Late on that fastball. Man, he was really tardy on that fastball. Great job of setting him up by throwing the curveball. Add some velocity to it on the next pitch. Can't catch up. And another ball. That's excellent location for a pitch like that. Looks like it's going to be a strike, and then it just runs in on the hands. So if you can command it and hitters have to respect it, just keep going in there until they make you make an adjustment. Lewis throws to first. One gone bottom half of the first. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. And one of the most exciting young stars in the sport, Isaac Paredes. Well, Boog, there aren't many guys who have a flair for the big moment like he does. I mean, batting over 400 with runners in scoring position. Are you kidding me? I know it's not guaranteed or an automatic, but I hope we get to see him in a close late game situation with runners in scoring position and just see, is he truly a machine or not? Michael Bush stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. Up and in, and yeah, that's ball two. Hit on the ground to the right side, and that's a fair ball. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Turned on it nicely, definitely a little out in front of the pitch, but he didn't hook around it too much and was able to keep it fair down the line. And now, Seiya Suzuki. Ball one there. Well, here's a fun fact for you, Boog. Suzuki is the first Japanese-born player to homer in three consecutive plate appearances in the majors. Feel free to use that note in your next Cubs broadcast, buddy. And he deals. Swing and a miss. That is strike two. Swings through it for the K. He swung over top of the curveball. Well, classic pitch sequencing there to change eye levels for the punch out. That fastball on the pitch before was off. It was very competitive. And that gets you thinking that he might try to climb the ladder. But then the curveball out of that same tunnel just falls off the table, and you can't make contact. Here comes Cody Bellinger. First offering. Runner goes. Pitch in for a strike. Throw to second. Ow! And that'll end the inning. Well, trying to get into scoring position, but a great catch and throw to end the inning. That's the way to pick up the pitcher. On the north side of Chicago, John Chambi and Chris Singleton. Here's Royce Lewis. This guy is an elite level hitter, especially considering contact, just the ability to hit for average. What you really like, though, stays in against those righties and that's not so easy as a right-handed batter clips the corner and that is strike one there's some players for whatever reasons they seem to just face a slew of right-handed pitchers and their comfort level increased so much that they'd actually prefer to face that same side thrower in a tough situation Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. That was blasted to the moon. He's up to three home runs in the series. And they jump ahead in the second. It's one nothing. That's a fun way to take the lead. Just hit one out of the park. Well, Boo, clearly some frustration out there on the mound right now. I mean, that ball was so close to going foul. Would have been a long strike, but instead, batter gets rewarded. Did a nice job of getting to the pitch and hitting it hard enough to get over the fence. Max Kepler in the box now. No balls and a strike. Yeah, most guys struggle against the same side, whether it's left on left or right on right, and this guy's an exception. 
Here's your one. Tap of the zone, and it's called a strike. Out to short. Oh, great grab on the dive. Fires to first, and they get the out. Great cat like reflexes right there. Lays out, knocks the ball down, and then fires with that rocket arm all the way across the diamond. Man, put this guy on the mound. Jose Miranda, the next twin up to hit. What a season it's been for him. He has supplied a lot of power and that average. And that one is inside ball one. Miranda getting to start at first, 25 years old, and he was born in Puerto Rico. Just missed. One down, base is empty. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. Not in time. Great effort, but it's an infield hit. One gone runner at first. So up next for Minnesota, Matt Walmer. Put that 600 slugging into context. The league average usually in the low 400s. First pitch doesn't find the zone. That one way inside. Not showing great command so far in this at bat. 2-0 count. He's got to execute here or this could get ugly. Strike one. Two balls, one strike. That one finds the zone. And now two and two. Stays alive. And the righty deals. And another ball. One run across in the frame so far here at the top of the second. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Uh, I think he might have gotten away with one right there. That was a very hittable pitch right over the heart of the plate. And I know that batter is kicking himself right now. Would like to get that pitch again. Just pulled the string on it, and the deception gets him the K. Next to hit, Austin Martin. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. Crow Armstrong raging back towards the wall. Makes the catch up against the wall. But they're off to a good start as they pick up a run on this solo shot. It's now 1-0. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at Wrigley Field, bottom half of inning number two. So up now for Chicago, Cody Bellinger. And the right-hander back to work. There's a swing and a drive. Dives. What a play. And wow, what a great diving catch, Singy. StatCast says that was a near perfect route, and it had to be. That's just a big part of his game. I mean, this guy's instincts just seem to always put him in a position to make special plays, and right there, he's done it again. Isaac Paredes now. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 
That one fouled off. Here's the 0-2. In the air, right field. That one gets down for a hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. That is good. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. Runner on at first with one gone. Mike Tockman getting ready to hit just off the outside edge. And that's ball one. Home team down a run. Bottom half of inning number two. And there's a strike. And another ball. And that is in for a strike. It's two and two. And that's outside. That's a hit. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. Dansby Swanson stands in. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. Swanson, former first round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Vanderbilt player in college, college World Series player, all that good stuff, but really coming into his own. Outside low, and that's ball one. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. Runners on the move. Bounding ball here, rolls foul. The pitch. That one finds the zone. That's strike two. Runners at first and second with one gone. Next pitch is outside. Well, I think he's trying to get a feel for where that one missed. I mean, it could have gone either way, but he looked a little shocked for a second there. At the belt and fires. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. And the right hater deals. That one misses. And it's three and two. Pete Crow Armstrong waiting to hit for the Cubs. Two on, one out. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. You can see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. Righty to the plate. That one lifted to left. He's under it. Makes the grab for the second out. And up next for Chicago, Pete Crow Armstrong. I'm curious how he decides to attack on the mound. This guy at the plate has been great hitting under pressure this year. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. First and second, two down. Right through there for a strike. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. That misses the zone. And the count, one and two. Rarely will you see a pitcher just waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. Called out on strikes. A controversial called strike three to end the inning.
He's in a tough spot, had to make a great pitch, did it, got the strikeout, gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. Here at Wrigley Field, and now it's Christian Vasquez. Hodge back to work. And that drops in for a strike. It's a good changeup to hit up in the zone. I don't think he recognized it. I'm sure he'd love to have that one back. Pitch is in for a strike, and the count is 0-2. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches. Now in an 0-2 hole, he's going to have to battle. Hope he gets a mistake. Not even close there. And the count one and two. Pretty standard high 0-2 fastball right there. If you're smart, to look for something down in the zone, but not too far. Don't want to chase that breaking ball in the dirt. Could be extra bases. Now he turns and heads for second. The relay, not going to get him. He's in there. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of this struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game, but all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. And here's the Twins leadoff guy, Willie Castro. He's one for one, let off the game with a single. Fought off foul. Runner at second, nobody out. Slice the other way and foul. Man at second. Hard on the ground to first. Bush takes it to the bag and one away in the top of the third. That's a good piece of hitting right there. It's early, but you still want to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score. That's exactly what happened, so you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. Larner swings through that one as he comes to the play for the second time today. And a pitch. That one called a strike. 0 and 2. Left-hand hitter waits. Close one, doesn't get the call. Now one and two. One away with a runner at third. Down to the dirt, swing and a miss. Amaya gathers, throws the first, out. Two away now after the drop third strike. I got to think that was the plan all the way. He set him up with the high fastball and then bury that curveball down low to get him swinging. Now, especially with how effective pitchers work up in the zone these days, that's a devastating combination. Here's the center fielder, Byron Buxton. He's been really clutch with runners in scoring position this season, so they'll have to be extra careful in this matchup. That one in there across the letters. Runner at third, two away. That's a base hit, run scores. Comes through with the RBI. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. 
Royce Lewis, the next twin up to hit. He's already homered here in this one. Right through there for a strike. No ball, one strike. Pickoff move to first. Buxton back in there. Pitch misses outside, and it's one and one. One run across in the frame so far. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. Amaya makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now a 2-0 ball game. As we go to the last of the third, now the Cubs catcher, Miguel Amaya. And a pitch. That misses. 1-0. Right through there for a strike. The pitch. And that one a little below the knees. And it's two and one. Curveball drops in there. The pitch. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Got him. One out. Just dropped it in there on the top of the strike zone. Certainly not what he was trying to do with that curveball by any means, but at the plate, you could tell he wasn't expecting it either. I'd say he got away with the big time hanger on that one. And next for the Cubs, Nico Horner. He's 0 for 1. Swing and a ball hammered left field. And it's into the bleachers. Out of here. That one felt good. Home run number five on the season. And they're on the board. It's 2-1. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself. At bat after at bat, he's that confident. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. One out, base is empty. And now the first baseman, Michael Bush. That's outside. And that is ball one. The wind of the pitch. Yeehaw. And that's outside. Two and one. The Twins leading by a run here in the last half of the third. That one misses. And a count is three and one. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. Payoff pitch. Fights it off, you'll see another. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. 
Now it's the right fielder, Seiya Suzuki. He was a strikeout victim his first time. That's a strike across the top of the zone. And a swing and a miss there. Another 0-2 count right here. Pitcher just in the driver's seat. He can go anywhere he wants to go right here. Two outs. No, that's outside. Ball. Foul ball still a one and two count. Got him swinging. But not before they answer back with a solo home run. And this is now a 2-1 ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Out of the fourth at the play, Max Kepler. Not a lot of people know this, but this isn't the only Wrigley Field in MLB history. You know, when the league expanded and added the Los Angeles Angels in 1961, they played their first season at a stadium in L.A. called Wrigley Field, which had been the home of the minor league team of the same name. This one rip, but foul to the right. The wind and the pitch. Outside. Two and one. Two and one. And that one fouled off. Got him looking. And one away. And here is Jose Miranda. Reached on an infield single his first time. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. Base is empty one away. Top half of inning number four. That one ripped. This one's got a chance. Banks off the wall. Into second with a double. And they've got something brewing now. He was all over that one. So close to blasting that one out of here the other way. But well, that's very tough to do when you take on the outfield gap like that. Beautiful swing, though. Let the ball get a little deep and drove it to the opposite field. One down. Matt Walner, the next twin up to hit. And there's a foul ball. <laughs> Left hand batter waits. No, Just no. missed. Good slider down and in can be so hard to get on plane with. You're better off taking that pitch. Righty delivers. Walmer tries to check his swing. Now a look to third. And he went around. That's ruled a swing. Here comes a pitch. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Base knock right for you. Into third now. So runners at the corners and one out. Nice line drive to the pull side. Met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Now it's the second baseman, Austin Martin. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. Top of the zone for a called strike.
First and third, one down. And now it's even up. Good miss with that change up away. He needs a ball on the ground for a double play. Minimize the potential threat right here on the hitter side. Nice job of laying off that pitch. And a good eye there. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. And a base hit knocks in a run. Back-to-back -back singles. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. So here's Christian Vasquez. A double and a run scored his first time up. Out in front and foul to the left side. One out. Runners at first and second. And a foul ball. Next pitch is outside. It's a good take. And it's even up. Well, the good thing so far is that he hasn't issued any free passes. Unfortunately, they're making pretty good contact. So not getting the swings and misses and making that defense work behind it. Two on, one out. Wouldn't chase that time. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. Bush makes the grab, two down. So the lineup flips over. Now here is Willie Castro, one for two. Off the mark there. Ball one. One ball, no strike. And a pitch. Swing and a base hit. Around third. He'll score, and they're up by three. Now Trevor Larnick, the next twin up to hit. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left handed hitter. A little out front there as he swings through it. More and more guys are looking to slug regardless of the count. In this situation, we'll keep a close eye on his approach. The other way. Oh, great stop. Gathers and throws. It's there, and that's a great play. Well, that's cat-like reflexes over there at the hot corner. Nice job of making that play and ending the inning. Bottom of the inning. Now, Cody Bellinger. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. That's in there. And that's strike one. 
Bellinger is an interesting example when you talk about scouting and development. I mean, this is a guy now that has turned into one of the premier power hitters in the sport. He was a fourth round pick out of Hamilton High School in Chandler, Arizona in 2013. He hit one homer his senior year. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And it's two and two. Very close pitch there, and that was a big one. Clearly, he thought he got the inside corner on the mound, and he's showing his frustration a little bit. And here it comes. Ground ball right side, and that's just foul. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. And the leadoff man aboard. Isaac Paredes, the next Cub to hit. And he's already singled in this game. And a foul ball. The Twins leading by three. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. To short, could be two. Touches the bag for one. How about that double play? Very composed play from the shortstop position right there. I mean, that was a perfect decision. Go ahead, take it yourself, get to second, and then fire to first. Make sure you get those two outs. Here's Mike Tockman. Ripped into right center, and that should be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. In safely, it's a double, and his second hit. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night, and just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Dansby Swanson is going to get a chance to hit. He's 0 for 1. Foul ball there. The shortstop takes the ball. And it is two and one. The pitch. That one fouled off. Two and two. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Two two. Just off the outside part of the plate. Pete Crow Armstrong on deck for the Cubs. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Now that. First and second, two down. Pete Crow Armstrong now at the plate. Right down to shoot. That's strike one. And that one upstairs. Two outs. Couple of base runners at first and second. And that's in for a strike. And he deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. A couple of hits in the inning, but they can't get him home. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Twins four and the Cubs one.
And we're back. All set for the start of the inning. And now for the Twins, Byron Buxton. The center field, number 25. Byron Buxton. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. When you examine Buxton's career trajectory, the thing that really jumps out, the speed and the defense early on. Kicks and deals. And that's a strikeout looking. He's got to be frustrated with that call. So he gets the call and picks up the strikeout looking. Sometimes with a good hitter at the plate, he'll be the one to get the benefit of the doubt if he lays off on a close pitch like that, but just not right there. Strike zone definitely expanded a little bit with two strikes. And first offering is fouled off. One down, base is empty. And that's in the dirt. Falling behind two and one. The wind of the pitch. And another ball. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. Hard hit, but right at him and left. Man, he smoked that fastball. He's all over it. It's just frustrating when you can't get it to fall. Maybe next time up, he'll find a hole. Max Kepler at the plate. Kepler measures six feet four inches 225 pounds and he was born in Germany missed with a changeup ball one there's a strike two down nobody on to the right side Slings to first, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Nothing doing here for the Twins, but they lead it 4-1. to one. Back here at the friendly confines, John Shelby with my buddy Chris Singleton. It's set to get us started. Bottom five, Miguel Amaya. The right hander back to work. And ball one. Some movement in the Twins bullpen. Bailey Ober, the young right hander, up and throwing. Richards getting cranked up as well. And the 1 0. Out in front with the swing, and that is strike one. The wide to kick the pitch. Got him swinging. Picks up strikeout number seven. So up now for Chicago, Nico Horner. He's already homered in this game. There's the strike. Now a drag bunt, third base side, and foul ball. Going to now. 0-2 oh, count, you got the opportunity to expand the zone. Could get the chase there. Let's see what he comes back with next. One out, base is empty. In the air, right field. 
Automatic double now as it hops the wall in foul ground. Well, there's something really nice about getting yourself an automatic double like that. You get to stroll into second base without having to worry about a throw or getting your uniform dirty. And now you're just looking for the next guy to kind of do the same thing. Maybe put one in the gap so you can jog home as well. Man at second with one away. And up next for Chicago, Michael Bush. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. The pitch. And that one clips the corner. One out and a runner at second. Last half of inning number five. Just misses with that one. And the righty deals. Tapped on the ground softly to short. Castro whips it to first on the run. And that is out number two. And next for the Cubs, Seiya Suzuki, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed. And it goes just foul. And the right hater deals. Fouled off. He was late. Man on second, two down. That missed by a lot. Gonna count one and two. That one just misses. Really close pitch down around the knees there, and you could see him asking where it missed. Probably doesn't agree, but it appears he's ready to move on to the next pitch. Man, it's second. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. One left for the Cubs, and this is still a 4-1 ball game. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Justin Steele. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. And here's the first baseman, Jose Miranda. Drove it off the wall last time, just missed out on a home run. The pitch. Right through there for a strike. All impressed that he went right after him on that first pitch. That's the key. Try to get ahead in the count, then you can play around a little bit more as the at bat expands. And that's in for a strike. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Julian Merriweather up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Pearson, a hard throwing right hander, up as well. And that one in the air center field. And it drops in. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. And now the lefty. Nope. Oh. And delivers outside. And ball nope. four to a board. Not the start to this inning he was hoping for on the mound. Now he's going to have to really dial it up against the bottom part of this lineup to get out of this jam. And stepping in is the speedy Austin Martin. 
RBI knock for him last time. Now a chance to drive in another run. That one hammered center field. Crow Armstrong going back on this one. Pulls it in on the warning track. Runner tags at second, and he makes it up to third with one away. Good read there at second base to move up to third. Now it's a lot easier to get that run in with one away. Christian Vasquez, the hitter. The bottom of the order here, Boog. you got to go right after this guy. As they look to pick up an add-on run, and the number nine guy at the plate. And strike one to the catcher. Really good job in this spot to get ahead in the count. He's going to have to continue, finish off this hitter. Swinging a foul straight back. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. And that skips in the dirt. Breaking ball inside. Two and two. Oh, he might have to look for a different put away pitch right here, two two. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. And now the count is full. And another power hitter lurking in the on deck circle. That's a good at bat right there. He was down early in that plate appearance. Works the walk. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. And now the shortstop, Willie Castro. We just might be talking about this at bat in our postgame wrap. He's proven he can drive in runs in these spots. But I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Well, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. The shortstop takes the ball. One two. Good job to fight that one off. At the belt and fires. Just missing there. Two and two. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. That's foul off to the right side, keeps the AB going. Next pitch is outside. Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like, he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. In the air of the infield, and the infield fly is called. Now it's the DH, Trevor Larnick. 0 for 3 with two ground outs and a strikeout. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Center field. Brings it in, and that's the third out. Twins leave the bases loaded as they hold on to a 4-1 lead. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Bailey Ober. Well, he's been excellent against left-handed hitters this year, and that's his first test. This looks like a good move to the pin in terms of the matchup. Here's Cody Bellinger. And a pitch. Bounding ball here, rolls foul. Bellinger's won a variety of awards in his career, hasn't he? I mean, he's been named Rookie of the Year, MVP, and Comeback Player of the Year now. Throwing a few Silver Slugger awards, and he has himself quite the trophy cabinet. Right-handed reliever. 
got him. Outside pitch got the better of him that time. Well, it's just a great job of playing catch with the catcher. Exactly where the catcher set up is where he threw that pitch and probably fooled the umpire a little bit because there was no budge at all. Here's the third baseman, Isaac Paredes. Ober, he's made a name for himself as a very effective reliever, but not really what you expect from a bullpen arm these days because he's not out there racking up K's. I think it's the deception and his ability to change arm angles and slots and give hitters different looks within one at bat. They're never able to get comfortable. When you only see him once, a lot of times he has success. Swings and misses. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. Talkman up for the third time here. Watches that one miss. The next pitch misses. Two balls, no strikes. Got to be clever, too, when you don't have that lights-out stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you got to know what you're able to do instead of focusing on what that hitter's strength is. Stay with your strength and trust that you'll come out on top. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Three up, three down, inning over. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Julian Merriweather. He last pitched two days ago. So digging in, Byron Buxton. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. The pitch. Puts it in the air out towards left center. And there's one down. Really nice job to get your first out of the ball game. Now battle, the third baseman, Royce. Now the third baseman, Royce Lewis. He launched a solo shot back in the second inning of this one. Yeah, that was big for these guys early on. Definitely helped them get off onto the right foot. Just missed. Base is empty one away here at the top half of inning number seven. That one misses, and it's 2-0. Oh. One down, base is empty. That one catches the zone. Now two balls and a strike. Ground ball right that's side, foul. and that's just foul. Righty to the plate. That's outside, and it's three and two. The punch out there, that's out number two. This guy will throw any pitch in any count, three, two. He goes off speed, gets the out. Right now batting Max Kepler. Kepler. And first offering is fouled off. And the pitch is outside, ball one. Backdoor breaking ball just missed right there, and boy. Umpire didn't give him the call. I bet you if he throws it again, hitter knows he's going to have to swing it. Two outs. And another ball. Two. 
Two down, nobody on. That one missing inside. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Swings and misses. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. And welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the seventh, and the batter will be the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. And the pitch. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. Kicks and fires. In the dirt, now one and two. And a pitch. Goes down looking. And now the center fielder, Pete Crow Armstrong. And there's a foul ball. And that one fouled off. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. And that's downstairs and outside. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, right now, he's in cruise control, autopilot, just dominating these hitters. He doesn't look like it's a fun at bat. And all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy on the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. And now it's Miguel Amaya. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Hard ground ball base knock. So the two out knock extends the inning and sends them back to the top of the order. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. He wasn't able to elevate it, but he put a great swing on it. Right on time, good balanced approach, and just blasted it through the infield. Now the batter now, Nico Horner. Outside low, and that's ball one. One ball, no strike. Righty delivers. Ouch, that one drilled him. Safe at first, and now after the play, we'll check on the right-hander status. Catcher coming out to check on him. It looked like it got him on his back leg. So you'll wonder if that might be a problem for him in terms of pushing off the rubber. Yeah, it's a great point, and we'll have to see how he looks. But to me, it appears he's moving pretty well. I think it's just going to sting for a while, but hopefully nothing more. On the mound now for the Twins, Caleb Thielbar. And he's had his struggles so far this year, as you can see the inflated ERA. Looking to bring that down a little bit right here. Now the number two hitter, Michael Bush. One for three. That's in there, and it's 0-1. With the tying run at the plate, you're the bottom of the seven. Go, 
In the air out to center. Buxton moves under it. Makes the grab and that's the inning. Cubs strand a couple. And they trail it 4-1. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Nate Pearson. And he has some nasty breaking stuff. And now the first baseman, Jose Miranda. Three for three with two singles and a double. And here comes. That one missed. Pearson measures six feet, six inches, 255 pounds, and they traded for him earlier this year. Swing and a foul pushed off to the right, and that will get out of play. Up and in, and it's two and one. Lined, and that's a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Now, now the left fielder, Matt Walmer. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Runner at first with no outs here. Just missed. Just missed with that backdoor breaking ball. If he gets a swing and miss or called strike, 0-2 count. Instead, it's 1-1. Look for him to go back to that pitch later in this at bat. Left-hand hitter waits. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And another ball. And he chases that one. And one gone. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Austin Martin, the next twin up to hit. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Makes the catch. Good pitch. He just kind of had him out in front on that pitch away and wasn't able to stay closed. Man at first, here's the catcher, Christian Vasquez. And a foul ball. Power relievers, one after another, coming out of the bullpen these days. Got to be ready for that first pitch heater. Two outs. Slapped hard the other way, but foul. And they'll do it again. The pitch. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Third out, and that ends the frame. Here at Wrigley Field, bottom of the eighth. So up now for Chicago, Seiya Suzuki. And he deals. High fly ball near the pole. That one is foul. Well, it's critical right here that they bear down and turn in some quality at bats, try to chip away at that lead, because if it gets to the ninth, that closer's coming in. Rip to third. Lewis throws to first. And a quick out, number one. A couple of pitches and a quick out. One down, here comes Cody Bellinger. Yeah. 
Check swing, and he held up. Movement in the bullpen. Yoan Duran warming up for manager Rocco Baldelli. Alcala also getting ready. And a pitch. Just off the inside edge. The Cubs trailing by three. Here the bottom half of the eighth inning. That one is absolutely belted. And it stays fair. Around first and hustling for second. Not stopping. He's going for three. And he's got himself a triple. Well, just a total nightmare for lefties. I'd be very surprised to see that match up again. High fastball, even a little above the zone, but such a good job of staying tall on the backside, getting that barrel there to meet it just in time. I tell you what, it's not easy to do. Runner at third with one gone. Isaac Paredes, the next Cub to hit. And a foul ball. Runner on at third, one gone. That one ripped left field. And that should be extra bases. Throw cut off to second. Not in time. He's safe. A run comes in on the play. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. What a great swing on it. And, man, he wasn't fooled at all. Here's the left fielder, Mike Tockman. Fastball for a strike. Out to short, Castro. Low throw, and he can't dig it out. Man, that was a great effort to lunge and pick that one at first. The throw was way short, but he almost bailed him out. Just couldn't get it to stick in the mitt. On the mound now, Cole Sands. And if you dig into his walk rate, his numbers are really impressive. He's really filled up the strike zone this season, so these batters better be ready to swing the bats. Substitution now at second base, and on a run for the Cubs, Ian Hatt. And up next for Chicago, Dansby Swanson. A strikeout and a walk. Sinker gets the bottom of the zone, and that's a strike. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. So the tying run at second. Line drive. Could be extra bases. Half on his way home. One runs in. Cut off. Throw to third. Save. He beats it. Well, that at bat had a lot of pressure riding on it, so really great job coming through right there. It's got to feel good. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Really important at bat coming up now. One down, runner at third. Here's the center fielder, Pete Crow Armstrong. There's a strike. Definitely a strikeout situation right here. Lots of ways for that go-ahead run to score if the ball's put in play. Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. He's had a tough day at the plate. Three strikeouts already. It's hard not to think negative. But you got to find a way to somehow center up the baseball and put it in play. Tied at four. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Oh, well, that's a huge strikeout right there. Big second out. Infield was in. They were playing the full court press, and he got the swing and miss. Keeps this one tied. This next at bat should be a lot of fun. The odds of wiggling out of this just went up considerably. Miguel Amaya, the next Cub to hit. 
right through there for a strike. Late on that fastball. It might be time to choke up a little bit, get that front foot down early, maybe even just spread out. He's really late right now. Just off the outside corner, and it's one and two. Two down, go ahead, run, and score in position. And a swing and a miss. Huge strikeout there. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. So coming into the game now on defense, Ian Hatt. He's the new third baseman. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. And the batter now, Willie Castro. And the right hater back to work. And that's through there for a strike. On the ground to third. In time to Bush, and they get the leadoff man in the ninth. If you want to be a great defense, you have to deliver consistently. It doesn't matter how many highlight reel plays you make if you can't execute the small stuff just like we saw. And next for Minnesota, Trevor Larnick. Cold strike right there. And that's outside and one and one. Four four in the ninth. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. They had a pretty ugly offer going into this game up until that at bat. So a little sigh of relief there. I know that was a ground ball, but it was absolutely hammered through the infield. That's not one you're excited to get in front of if you're an infielder. You know they used to say, charge it. Crazy. So a change being made at first base. Entering is the pinch runner, Manuel Margot. One down, runner at first. Byron Buxton, the next twin up to hit. Ground ball left side could be two. Flips it for one. Double play. And that sends us to the bottom of the ninth. We are tied. They made it look easy, but it started with a nice feed to the second baseman from the shortstop. Perfect turn. And they're out of this jam. Bottom of the ninth. Here's the Cubs leadoff man, Nico Horner. And it may be a long shot, but a triple here will give him the cycle. Sands back to work. Right through there for a strike. Action in the pen down there. Yoan Duran warming up for manager Rocco Baldelli. Richards warming up as well. Tied at four. Check swing. He held up. And now it's even one and one. Yeah, that's a little bit high. Really been able to slow down the game tonight with his at bats and the biggest one he's had so far. He doesn't look anxious at all. That's in for a strike at 95. It's two and two. And another ball. Michael Bush waits on deck. Right-hander kicks deals. On the ground. Martin. In plenty of time to first. One up, one down. That play won't be trending on social media later on, but it's still important to execute it to perfection. This game is a lot harder than it looks, partner. And here's the first baseman, Michael Bush. That one a little bit high, and that's ball one. Home plate umpires trying to tighten things up a little bit. 
And that one fouled off. The pitch. And now two and one. High fly ball out towards left field. Walner on the move, racing back to the warning track, makes the catch. Man, I'm telling you, you better have your life insurance policy right. When you challenge the Ivy, there's brick behind that. It's not forgiving at all, but he seemed to be concerned about one thing, and that's making that catch. Nice job. Suzuki in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. And there's a rocket into the outfield. And that one's going to get into the corner. Makes the turn and heads for second. Not stopping. He's going for three. And it's a two-out triple to put the winning run at third. I'm sure that feels pretty good after going hitless in this one so far. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep, so... Pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Now just one swing away from potentially walking this thing off. Runner at third, two gone. And up to the plate comes Cody Bellinger. And a base hit up the middle. Across is the winning run, and the Cubs walk it off 5-4. Well, you're coming to the ninth inning. It's a tied ball game. No one really wants to play extra, so everyone's looking at how we can get this game over with in regulation. Well, they got the run they needed, put one up, and they put one in the win column. Close one here today, and your final 5-4. So the Cubs celebrate at the plate for Chris Singleton and our entire crew. I'm John Chomby saying so long.